Welcome back to a new video. In this video we will discuss another Schmidt trigger circuit where we have again an asymmetric operation for the threshold voltages. This will be a non-inverting Schmidt trigger. Again we will see how we can derive the formulas in order to get a design and also verify these in SPI simulations. Okay we have here the Schmidt trigger circuit which, ha which has an output limit of plus or minus 10 volts of the output. You see here that we have four resistors, R1, R2, R3 and R4. And you see that the input is here applied through resistor R1 in this non-inverting input. So that is a non-inverting Schmidt trigger. In addition to what we have discussed with the non-inverting Schmidt trigger in the previous example, where we had a symmetric threshold voltages. Now we have in addition here two resistors R3 and R4 to create these asymmetric threshold voltage levels as shown here. So you see here the lower threshold voltage of 1.5 volts and the higher threshold voltage of 3.5 volts. So you cannot do this if you not place these resistors there. The output limits as said must be V max plus 10 volts and V minimum minus 10 volts for this circuit means at the output we have two states. Okay now before we jump to the actual calculations it is always helpful to draw this input versus the output waveform. You see here the following it has the low and the high state and it has the high threshold and low threshold. So we see the VTH which is 3.5 and a VTL which is 1.5. Now in between here you see a region of 2 volts separation. In the middle you have the 2.5 as the reference. So you have a hysteresis here as we have discussed this also in the previous examples of 2 volts. This is the maximum 10 volt and this is the minimum at the output of minus 10 volts. So always handy to see this diagram before you do the analysis and you see also here that the output level goes from the low state to the high state when we reach this VDH which is then a non-inverting operation. And when you go back from the high stage to low stage, you need to approach this VTL. Okay, let's look at our calculations in the solutions. First, we start with designating our two nodes. We have here node X and Y, which is the non-inverting and inverting nodes of this circuit. Now, this is a very important statement. At switching, we require that the VX is equal to VY because the op-amp is always comparing the two inputs. And if this VX, the voltage at node X is larger than VY, then you have the output the maximum state, which is then in this case V max, which is 10 volts. And if your V x is smaller than V y, then you have that the V out is V minimum. This is always necessary to put it down when you consider the Schmidt trigger circuits. Now we can now set up an equation at node x and then proceed to, towards our values or resistors. So we can say this resist uh, the current I1 and I2 are equal to each other since there's no current flowing this op-amp, considering that to be an ideal. Then we can say I1 is equal to I2, and I1 is equal to here VI minus this VX over the resistor R1, that's the left side, and I2 is VX minus the V out over the resistor R2, that is the right side. We can now do the cross multiplication, so this times R2 is equal to this times R1, that's shown here. And now we can now work out the parentheses and combine the terms, which is related to Vx. So we can now place this on the right side, place this on the left side and flip the equation actually, which you see here. And now we have an expression for Vx in terms of the resistors, the input voltage and the output voltage. This is a very important formula, an expression we will use to determine the resistors R1 and R2. Again, a statement which is necessary to consider. We have also discussed this of course in the diagram but now we need to put it in more detail. If the circuit is in the low state, for example you are here at the minus 10 voltage your output, that means V out is V minimum and we want to switch to the high stable state which then V out is V maximum, then we require that we need at the input of ETH. That's actually the meaning of this statement because we have a non-inverting Schmidt trigger. In a similar case, if you're at the high state where you want to go back, then you need to approach this VTL, which is then VI, must approach then 1.5 volts. So this is then again a statement, and again we have a non-inverting Schmidt trigger. So in summary, we can say that for the first statement, that the 4V 
in of VTH and VO of V minimum because there you start we have the following expression so you actually use this expression substitute for VI your V threshold high and for VO V minimum because that is where you start and this is where you trigger in order to go to the high state now let's call this equation number one now in a similar form we can now summarize this second statement here so VI will be then V threshold low and V out will be then V maximum and you have here your expression again this VI here VI is here and VO is here and VO is here that's just a replacement depending on the situation for your output voltage now let's call this equation number two so we have now here two equations we can now equate the equation number one and equation number two so equating these two equations we have the following because these are vx and vx and we have this long expression now we can multiply the left and the right hand side by r1 plus r2 the summation we have this simple expression and now we can now collect the values for the parts where we have the r2 so we can actually move this to the left side so r2 vtl to the left and r1 v minimum to the right side and this is now an interesting thing because now you have the resistor r2 times the difference so the vth minus vtl and then r1 times the v max minus v minimum but we have here two unknowns those are the r1 and r2s but only one equation because that's the only equation we have now so we need to select a value for one of the unknowns in order to proceed okay let's bring it here to create some space now if we just set the resistor r1 is to be one kilo ohm then we can rewrite this such that we have r2 expressed in the other parameters then you have this expression so you do actually r2 is equal to this part right side divided by the v threshold high minus v threshold low now we have selected our resistor r1 we know that v max is 10 and we also know v minimum is minus 10 so it will be then 10 minus minus 10 divided by the threshold high minus the threshold low you see here the result that will now end up to 20 times this 1000 over 2 will be in this case exactly 10 kilo so we have now found also the resistor r2 now this is again the formula we have used in order to get the values for r1 and r2 now you can also say what the value of that vx must be if you take the set for going from low state to high state what happens now you go now or from high state to low state in this case it's going from the high state to low state you see you start at 10 volts and going down at vtl if you substitute here for the vi 1.5 and vo 10 the result for the vx must be then 25 over 11 volts exactly or approximately 2.27 volts but if you do that for the other part if you say okay this is maybe a coincidence you can also go from the low state to the high state that means you go here for the v in 3.5 and then for the output minus 10 you see here the minus and of course these are all the values we have found for the resistors r1 and r2 and again this is now 25 over 11 again the, approximately this value so we already said that at switching which is then vx is equal to vy so this no voltage must be equal to vx in order to have that switching now before we jump to the analysis for the resistor r3 and r4 we also need to make the following adjustment in our power supplies because we think that we have v out max and v out minimum of plus 10 and minus 10 volts so we might think okay we put here the power supply of plus 10 and minus 10 for our operation amplifier the thing is the operation amplifier will consume some voltage so we need to also compensate for that so for the analysis we will see that also shortly in the simulation we have put here 11.5 volts for the positive side which is then vcc and minus 11.5 for the ve which is the negative power supply this will be discussed shortly when we see the simulation results so we have 1.5 volts higher and lower than the output limits but now the voltage at node y what do we see here now this is pretty simple by doing voltage division 
So you can say R4 over R3 plus R4 times this VCC, which is in this case 11.5. This should be then Vx at that switching. Now we can now also rewrite this. So you can do Vy times R3 plus R4 in the parentheses equal to R4 times VCC. And again, you can work out the parentheses. So R3 times Vy and then Vy times R4 and then replace that second term to the right side and you have here this expression. Okay, what do we see? Again, we see here two unknowns, R3 and R4 because Vy is known. We can say that because that's Vx and Vcc is 11.5. So we need the resistors R3 and R4, but we only have one equation again, the same problem. So we need to select one of the unknowns here. If I now set now the resistor R4, four here to two kilo ohms so in this case i select that i can now calculate r3 so i can say r3 is equal to this over vy that's shown here so since r4 is known and the other parameters are also known we can substitute here this 2000 times this 11.5 minus exact value of 25 point over 11 over 25 over 11 again now this is exactly 8.12 kilo ohms so this is now the result for the resistor R3. All right, this is now the result of our analysis, R1, R2, R3, and R4. So we have determined now the four resistors for this circuit. Okay, so now the simulation result. Before we do that, let's also present our circuit here in the SPI simulator. You see here the input, the resistor R1, which is one kilo ohm, R2, which is 10 kilo ohms, R3, which is 8.12 kilo ohms, an R4 of 2 kilo ohms. In this case, we have chosen the operation amplifier TL081 and the power supply VCC and the VEE are shown here, which is an 11.5 and minus 11.5. The plot for the output and the input is shown here. You see here the red curve, which is a triangular wave. The peak value of this input is 8 volts and it has a frequency of 100 hertz. And the blue line is our output voltage. Now, what do we see? We see here at the output maximum value of 9.98 volts and the minimum here is labeled as minus 9.98 volts so in summary the results are shown here but we required plus and minus 10 volts so this is pretty close also looking at the threshold voltage you see here that the red curve which is our input is increasing and then at some point it is now in this case 3.48 volts it's going from the low state, that is the blue line, to the high state. So it is doing the non-inverting action. So it is now switching from low state to high state at this voltage, which is 3.48 volts, which is a little bit smaller than the 3.5 volts we wanted. The next one is about the 1.5 volts. Again, if this is going down the input voltage at this 1.5, exactly as we wanted, it's our lower threshold then our high state will switch to the low state. So this is exactly as we wanted. And this is just, again, as some uh, error here, 20 millivolts, again, pretty okay for most practical purposes. So we can say this is all fine and we have achieved our design objectives. All right, this was our example considering the Schmidt trigger in the asymmetric threshold levels, which is now in this case also a non-inverting Schmidt trigger. If you have any questions, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care.